Just already on day two, uh, we've been talking with um, uh, graduate students about brand management and marketing, uh, high level finance. Uh, but so often when you bring the foundations of tech uh, with business skills, it's a very, very powerful confirmation um, combination. Uh, and the opportunities that then creates uh, in terms of next career steps. And I think this panel is going to be a wonderful uh, example. Uh, we're going to take a spotlight on the uh, the Masters in Information Systems at the Kelly School at Indiana, which means, of course, it's a chance for me to welcome back Rebecca Cook, uh, who's uh, always welcome to the Center Court event. She is the Executive Director of Kelly Career Services, undergrad, grad, there's a huge team. And it wasn't easy for her to tell me exactly when she gets time off from seeing so many generations coming through and the sort of uh, career opportunities that they then explore. And Mitali Mayer is a fantastic example. Uh, she took the uh, MSIS, uh, graduated in 2020. She had done undergrad at Kelly with finance, uh, econ consulting and business analytics, and then uh, moved into this master's program, landed a job at McKinsey uh, in the summer of last year, uh, and now working in Chicago. So you know how busy those McKinsey schedules are. We're very, very grateful, Natali, that you can join us. But Rebecca, perhaps, you know, we can start with the Kelly School. This is one program among a, a, a portfolio. Uh, the school offers so much. Tell us a little bit about the school, that wonderful alumni body that you have, uh, and uh, where this program fits in. Yes, yeah, so we have, we do have a very large uh, student body at Kelly. Um, we have a very large undergraduate program of, I think it's about 10,200 current students. Um, and then we have a variety of different master's programs. So we have the MSIS program, which you'll learn more about here today. Um, we have a master's in uh, finance program. We have um, two master's in accounting programs. So it's called a 3-2 MBA. So you do get an undergraduate and graduate degree um, in five years as well as um, the MS ADA, which is MS in Accounting and Data Analytics. Um, then we have full-time MBA program, as well as our online Kelly Direct program. So lots of different pieces, always things changing. We have a new master's in management coming in next fall, I believe. Um, we have a master's in healthcare management also. That's a joint degree with our O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs. So lots of things and happening. <laughs> how does all of that fit into, not, not just how does it fit into the buildings, because you've got some great uh, online options, but, you know, in, in terms of Kelly as, as, as a culture, I mean, we often talk about the, not just the success of alumni, some of them are CEOs of Fortune 500, they're working at MBB and, and elsewhere, um, but the school, you know, when, when you, how, how do you like to describe Kelly to friends or family? I think to me, I mean, it's, it is a family. It's, I, I'm a Kelly MBA alum. Um, it's really the culture here that I think what it drives a lot of the people. I mean, all the programs are fantastic and top-notch faculty, top-notch support in all the different areas, but it's creative, it's innovative, but I think a lot of it also comes from the students and the humility of the students. I mean, our students are known as jumping in, ready to roll up their sleeves and go, yet they bring a fabulous education and they know what they need to get done or they're willing to learn. So it's really an it's our students come in and it's honestly that any employer once they get one Kelly they're like we need more of those and I hear that all the time which is a great a great problem to have. <laughs> That's a, it's a wonderful reputation. I talked about a tech foundation combining that with business skills. So where does the masters in information sit in terms of who it's suited for? I mean I was looking ninety percent of ninety seven percent of graduates got job offers in the fields that they were looking at with really attractive starting salaries and bonuses. So. Who is this program suited for and the sort of careers they go on to pursue? Sure. It's really, it's for students interested in that intersection of technology and business. So it's coming from, um, I mean, a lot of our students are Kelly undergraduates, but not all. And they, um, it's really understanding, okay, I'm really interested in the tech space. So how do I combine that knowledge of some of the technology skill sets, but also again, that business knowledge and being able to be that liaison between the two sides, because there's an extreme you know, the technology where you're the coder or where you really are in depth in the tech building of something versus the business person. So this degree really combines the two and allows or creates someone essentially who can go into any business, any kind of organization and be that person to lead those teams. Natalie, you know, turning to you because you'd already 
completed undergrad with uh, finance, business analytics. So what was the thought process? And I know that you worked with Rebecca's team uh, in terms of, well, yeah, I could go onto the job market or I could pursue this master's. What, what, what were you thinking? Sure. Um, so basically, throughout my time at Kelly, I joined in 2015. And by the time I was in my senior year in undergrad, I realized that technology went from, uh, in the context of the business terms, went from just being, you know, a part of it to something that enables the process daily. And it was during that point that I realized that even though I had a well-rounded business degree, I did want something that would help me also understand the application of technology within the context of businesses. And uh, that's when I was uh, kind of also spoke to Rekha's team and uh, I went forward with the Masters of Information Systems for grad, a program at Kelly. Um, the thought process just being more along the lines of I uh, looked at the coursework and I realized like this was something that aligned with my interests and exactly what I wanted to kind of un uh, understand the intersection of business technology. And as Rebecca mentioned, I feel like this is like the perfect combination of uh, us getting exposure to technology as well as um, understanding how it plays into the business context in today's world. Well, you talk about the coursework. How is the program structured? The sort of the balance of different courses, even you know, electives that you can then pursue. Sure. Um, and this might have changed since my time was there, but uh, in terms of the overall structure of the program, it's same. The first semester that we take is known as the course, and basically that's fifteen credit hours of different um, foundational courses that everyone has to take in the program. And this ranges from learning how to uh, program an application, which I had never no experience prior to, to learning uh, technology, project management, business processes, uh, different kind of approaches. So again, it's like a variety of things. And they were like very different fields, but all applicable to technology in today's uh, day and world. So uh, I think that was like a very yeah, sweet semester for me because I feel I was learning a lot at the same time. And it was also, it helped me learn how to prioritize. And it's great to have learned that in the university environment because I think some of the time management skills I've learned from um, that semester have really carried forward uh, throughout my professional journey. And then the second semester is where we choose our concentrations. And I believe the, uh, there used to be three concentrations, now there are six, but this is where we kind of choose some of the electives. And I chose the digital enterprise system uh, concentration, which was um, dealing with more ERP and enabling like digital tools uh, as, um, as like uh, a key uh, part of the businesses. So, I mean, I learned how to configure a, an ERP system, which was something I don't think many people could say they've done in the coursework. So it's something very unique and challenging, but again, learned a lot. So yeah, the coursework uh, is uh, definitely really interesting. Uh, for me, like I did have the conversation before I entered the program with the, the advising folks uh, for MSIS, and that's what really helped me determine like this was what my interest was. So you learn to code those digital skills, perhaps at a more personal level, other than also uh, intangible skills that you, you know, the, the ability to translate um, your know, complex information systems into storytelling and, and how to best share that with others. Sorry, uh, I, I can you repeat the question? So I, I suppose I'm thinking of how you've then also learned to take all of those technical skills and other other skills to, to you know to, to then have the storytelling skills absolutely. to help that make sense to others absolutely and you know we had different times of our case competition as well within where the story lining was really important because you know you know you have all these technology and good stuff you're doing but you need to also know how to translate it to something uh, other folks can understand and really make it interesting because not everyone's going to be familiar with oh like I did this kind of a remediation with technology they don't don't know uh, what exactly it does so you really need to be able to convey that the actual story for someone who's like not as technical to be able to understand that. I think like that is one of the key focuses of the program because we can take the technology and throughout the program we've learned and how to kind of uh, cater uh, the messaging towards the uh, audience that we need to get it to. So it could be like both for both technical and non-technical folks, you need to kind of know your audience and learn how to communicate to them. So there's and great talent into the program, but to achieve 97% job offers in the fields that they're looking for, 
so much work behind the scenes with the career services team. So tell us how the team works to then provide that level of coaching, uh, support, interviewing, network. There must be so many different elements involved. Um, so actually, so the program, real MSIS really starts in June, pretty much early June. And it depends on if students have a business background or not. Uh, but some of them will be going through kind of a boot camp, essentially, and really starting with um, getting some of the basic understanding to then they go into the core classes. And so we start working with the students right away in June. And it's interesting because this year we may even start earlier, but um, but really trying to get them ready. And the hard, because the hard part is some of the students will go through a, call it 11, 12 month program. Some may decide to do an internship between it. And so we'll end up the following December. And so it's, it's a little bit fluid, but what either way, recruiting starts right away. So companies, especially post COVID have moved up hiring cycles and using like McKinsey, for example, applications close in, I think, early August <laughs> or end of July. So how do we begin to get students ready who haven't even started? Really? I mean, you know, they've just begun. So we really walked through a lot of online um, virtual programming where we get everybody together once a week. And then there's other homework and things in between. So trying to help them begin to get ready for things happening right away. Uh, right. And then... I'm trying to think, I think it was like the Friday before school starts. Um, the we partner with the program office to bring in a lot of different companies to do mock interviews with students and really begin to do an introductory uh, introductory networking type event with the students. And again, that technically is before official fall classes start, so it's usually end of August or so. Um, and then throughout the fall and even in the spring. We work on different programming, whether that's a group programming with the entire MSIS population or on an individual programming or individual conversation level. And we have three coaches that are working with our different MS programs. And so they, any student can come in and meet with any of the three coaches. We also do like office hours and just try to be in front of students a lot more than, um, than maybe we have in the past. But it's really trying to help students figure out Okay, what is it that you want to get to? Let's look at the timing of that. Are you looking at an internship to try to get to that, whatever that is, or are you going full time? Um, and it's also the current environment's thrown a little bit of a wrench in this, in the sense of if students want to go into consulting, a lot of consulting firms aren't hiring as much right now. So, what are other ways we can help those students get there? Yeah, I, I guess Mitali, you'd thought about already how quickly technology evolves. Uh, and at a Centre Court Masters Festival event 12 months ago, we wouldn't have been talking about AI and chat GPT, and yet here we are. <laughs> so I suppose how have uh, Rebecca and her team both helped you with this initial wonderful start? You've got two great networks, the Kelly Network and now the McKinsey Network, but also think about the longer term management of your career, you know, staying up to date with technical skills, but also the sort of things that help you to advance within any organization. Sure. Um, I think uh, the career services has very good insight into what are like some of the marketable skills that the employers are looking in because like they do have those open communication channel with those folks so of course like whenever I came up with uh, like any questions and uh, to the coaches during the drop in hours or any appointments they knew what exactly with the skill sets I could aspire to focus on and that was very helpful as a yardstick also I do uh, want to point out another thing especially at MSIS what I found was like very unique is our faculty is also like very close in touch with the alumni so that's why even through to them we would get those insights so I think like it was a very collaborative effort between the program and the career services to really ensure that the students are set up in terms of success. Now, Rebecca had talked about, you know, Kelly students, they have this great rec reputation for rolling up their sleeves and, you know, being able to, to really jump in very, very quickly. You, your comment about the faculty, did you feel that, you know, through the program, you were learning things that you could then really apply in a professional context? Absolutely. I I think uh, the faculty really did make sure we were kind of getting a real life experience as much as possible in an academic environment, which I really do appreciate that. As I mentioned, like I was learning how to prioritize different things from the beginning, as well as uh, we were put in like different teams. So it has been something very nice to learn. Like, you know, you've 
kind of put on a team to solve a problem with folks you've never really met before and are you're from very different backgrounds so it teaches a lot about you about yourself as well as how to communicate with other folks and that is something I have learned during like my profession especially as a product manager and now as a consultant at McKinsey because you know in order to solve problems I've been put on like different teams with different folks so that having that practice at least in real uh, in like an academic world has translated into really strong skills in the real world. When recruiters, obviously they talk about the, the great <clears throat> reputation that the school has, but I mean, Rebecca, between perhaps uh, the, the MBA students in their late 20s, um, you know, the master's students who could be in their early to mid 20s, what, what sort of discussions do you have about <clears throat> these sort of different points of development, skills that they then might be looking for? So, ah, you know, this is what we love about the MSIS graduates at this point in their career. I think employers are really interested in MSIS students and have been and continue to be so um, really, again, because they have that combination of business and the technology side and any company, no matter what industry needs that skill set, it's everybody has some sort of technology base that they're using or needing to understand. And they need people to with the business acumen to understand how can I work through this and together. So I think um, I mean, I'm just thinking of last couple of weeks and we talked to a lot of employers about our MSIS students and just the companies are fascinated by the concept, but then also really, really impressed when they meet the students and just of how much value the students can bring at the age of, call it 22, <laughs> 23, maybe. Um, so it's, it's really the students come in and really can immediately start adding value to their companies. And that's that's what the companies are loving. And this, of course, strategy consulting firms like McKinsey work with clients across all sectors. Do you see that you know, the graduate opportunities for the MIS students, Rebecca, you know, healthcare, finance, supply chain? I mean, it really is very, very broad. It really is. I mean, I think I'd say historically, a lot of our students in the MSIS program wanted to go into consulting firms, typically at Deloitte, PwC, McKinsey, EY, you know, but what's interesting is there, the demand for these students really, again, is across the board. So like a Granger or an Intuit, or I'm just looking at our companies from last year, Orbis, a more of an accounting firm, um, Toyota Material Handling, um, you know, Cummins, you know, it's all sorts of different types of companies. And even this year, that's become even broader. And it's really, again, all different kinds of areas. So it's helping the students then decide what are they really looking for and how can they make the biggest impact? And also, how do they find a company that they're comfortable with and they like the culture at? Sometimes, you know, if you're a name of a company, it's like, oh, I want to work there. But then you realize you actually don't like it or it's not a fit for you. So helping helping those students figure out what that could be. You've come through four years of undergrad at Kelly Mitali. When, when you think about yourself on day one of the MSIS uh, and then graduating, could, could you, uh, obviously it's your own mirror, but could, could you see or feel the difference in terms of a level of industry readiness or a maturity that the program had brought you? Oh, absolutely. I noticed throughout my time, the program, like before the program, and initially I was like going for interviews, I felt like really underconfident or like felt like somewhere that, oh, maybe I was not prepared. And as I went through the program in the next year when I was in interviews, I was so confident because I know like I had learned all this stuff and even the conversations I was having with the interviewers, like I could actually speak more detail and ask them like more detailed questions. So definitely... I would say I developed my leaps and bounds during my one year. Is, is, the, is, is the one, perhaps an, an unexpected uh, element of the one year that, that really sticks out or you think had the greatest impact? Um, I would say definitely the community, the MSIS community. So I would say like, the career services, the faculty, and even the students, there's just such a collaborative environment within this program that uh, you have any questions or need any help or assistance, folks are just there for you and willing to help each other out. And I think like that is some, even though like we were almost, I think 150 students at the time, it felt like a small community because we all knew each other because we've interacted uh, so well and it like felt very close knit. And I think that's like something I'm always gonna carry forward. And it's a great, yes, as you say, it's a great network. So with viewers at Center Court from all over the world, uh, some might be seniors in college, uh, others might be a year or two into their careers. 
what would your advice be to anybody that's thinking about that investment in themselves, you know, staying on in business school for a specialised master's degree like the MSIS? What, what advice would you give to them? Um, I think my advice to them would be really understand what the course is offering, like take that extra effort of sending an email or uh, getting that conversation going about understanding what the course that you are considering is offering and how does it align with what you want to learn. The focus should be on like, since this is an investment in yourself, you should be not compromising on the quality of your education or whatever topics you need to learn. So definitely would recommend uh, more than rankings or anything else, get to know the content and then choose your master's program. If something that aligns with you, uh, that's great because I think like success comes very naturally in an academic program when you're really interested in the overall content. Rebecca, when um, the, the Kelly team are either they're out on the road uh, through info sessions that they organize, just you know, talking to possible candidates and so many choices, you know, keeping it general management with the MBA versus something more specialized with the MSIS. How do you uh, encourage them to think about those different options and how they might not just align with skills and the future job market? That's very important, but you know, th their own passions and interests. I think Vitaly hit it right on the head, though. It's it's thinking about what do you, what is your purpose for this degree. So when she talked about your, her background, you know, really it was the MSIS program added a lot of value because it was something different and it was a skill set that she thought she could use and was very valuable. Um, so I think with any program, look, you know, do you want to go further in accounting? Are you you maybe you didn't do finance before and you're looking to get a master, you know, grow that finance acumen. MSIS, you're really trying to grow that technological space. So really thinking through why you want to do this um, and really making sure then it's the right fit. So like with a full-time MBA program, usually you have to go out and get a couple of years of work experience and then come back to get that MBA. So it's a different kind of a different talking point or a different a different discussion. But but if you are looking to you know continue that programming right after the undergraduate, then it's again, really look at what do you hope to get out of it? why, what types of roles are you going to be looking at? Will that fit? I mean, are you gaining skill sets that are relevant still? Um, there's lots of different questions, but I think working with your career services office, talking to faculty, as Natalie said, reaching out to the program that you're thinking about, actually having long conversations with them and talk to current students, um, mm -hmm. but really trying to figure out if it's the right fit for you. Yeah. And given the admissions selectivity for such a great program, um, are there certain either undergraduate backgrounds, you know, Mitali had done uh, finance, business uh, analytics, or given the way that the program is structured, you could come up, come up with, you know, many diverse uh, academic backgrounds and successfully join the program? I think it's pretty diverse. I would say a lot have business backgrounds or technical, te more technical backgrounds, um, but it doesn't have to necessarily, like, like Mitali, you were talking about coding, right? You hadn't done it. <laughs> so um, so it's not a requirement to have done a lot of these things, but it's more of just, is this an area that you're really interested in and why? So you could come in from a totally different unrelated area and it would be fine, but it's then catching up on everything. And it's like, why are you really interested in looking at this tech and business intersection and kind of telling that story? Yeah. Well, with so many options out there, I think, you know, be able to have your experience, Mitali, uh, and, and obviously as uh, things have worked out so well, uh, it's inspiring to others. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sure people uh, from Centre Court will reach out and connect with this wonderful uh, Kelly community and the alumni. It was great to have you with us. Thank you again. And Rebecca, it's always a pleasure to welcome you to Centre Court. Thank you to both of you. Thank you. Thank you.